G'day guys, Jake here. Today I'm going to be taking you through how to install Asterisk, which is an open source unified communications platform. And what it's good for, well, what I want to use it for and am going to use it for is an IPPABX system, which basically runs IP phones, connects to a SIP trunk, and does phone calls. But it can also be used for a bunch of other things which I might get to in other tutorials. But they have, like, it's a open source thing that's installable on Linux and you can install it from source or you can, they give a thing called asterisk now. So I'll just look it up. And it's just, there's a website here, like asterisk.org. And as you see, get ready, you know, do whatever you want. And it's created and you know, managed by these people called Digium, who actually sell phones and stuff that work with Asterisk. But what we want to do is go to Downloads, and this tutorial is going to be using Asterisk Now, which is just a full Linux distro based off CentOS, or CentOS, depending which way you want to say it. But also here, this has the latest Asterisk version which you can, can compile and install from source on your Linux distro. So yeah, what I'm doing is just download Asterisk now, which I've already done, and so we'll change screens and I'll show you what the go is. So I'm just doing this on a VMware thing. I've put the ISO in there. Now as you see, I just want to right click here and go down to full install with the PBX module. And it's just going to do its little magic. It takes a while to get going. So as you see, it will just find its drives. Now for this, you can set your IP configuration. I'm just leaving it as DHCP. I don't really care. And it's just going to find and see if it can connect to the internet or connect to a router or anything, see what the network configuration is. And then it'll take you to the next screen. So now you just need to put in your time zone, which, well, I'm in Australia, so I'll go down and find Melbourne because that's the closest to me. I'll just keep going. Oop. So there we go, Melbourne. Hit OK. Now this is all done by, via the keyboard. No mouse interaction. So now you just need to set your root password. So I'll just set mine. And you need to confirm the password. Make sure they're right. And you should really write these passwords down because if you lose them, it's really annoying. And now it just goes through and does its installation. There's not much more to it for this part. So now I've just sped this up. This actually takes a little while. And I actually I'll just skip it. So now it reboots. And you just met with this little rebooting screen. Test for internet access, get its network connections all good and going. Start its services. And then we should be met with a login screen. So now I'm going to log in as root and put in the password that we put in before. Hit enter. And now you see, see just there the IP address right there. That's the IP address we're going to use to log in to the web console that it sets up, which it sets up a free PBX web console. Just see. Just open up my little Chrome browser. So now that IP address, you just need to type it in in the top and hit enter. And it'll set ask you to provide the credentials, but you don't know them yet, so you're going to need to set the first ones, which will be for the free PBX module. This won't actually be the root user for your Linux. This will be for the administration of FreePBX, not for the administration of the server. 
So as you see, I just put in my name, email address, whatever. And here we go. You can just hit free PBX administration, the user control panel, operator panel, or to get support. We want to go into the admin panel and just take a look around. So I'm going to hit admin, and then it's going to ask you for your admin username and password, which I've just set as admin admin. It's pretty easy to remember. I'm only testing. I'm not being serious. In real world, you probably wouldn't want the username to be admin and admin because it's very easy to break. As you see, you get just some basic service statistics. You can see CPU load, memory, uptime. And these are your menus up there. And yeah, so basically now you know that it's installed and all working. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you. Don't forget like and subscribe to see more videos. And I'll see you later.